How many exorcisms have you done, Father? I don't, I don't keep a count. I mean, because there's cases and then there's multiple sessions mm. that it takes within the cases. But uh, over the years, a great many, I've, I've had dozens of cases. Mm. Um, and some, some of them have taken many, many sessions. How often do they involve, have you sensed sort of themes or patterns in the sorts of sins that are involved? Or is it really any, like you said earlier, mortal sin, whether it has to do with sex, no, sexual No, there's issues, a pattern. I what, mean, are, what are the patterns? The most, the most common causes for possession are a participation in the occult and sexual sin. Those would be, would be the two. But, but the occult one is greater than, mm-hmm. than the sexual one. And it's greater because in a dabbling in the occult, participating in the occult, you are replicating the sin of Lucifer and his fallen angels. God has placed a limit on reality, right? So, so when you consciously choose to bypass that limit, so you go consult a fortune teller, a Ouija board, to get information about things that you shouldn't know, you have no right to know, and, and God has placed a limit on it. But you go there, you are bypassing the limits. Like you are raging against God. Of, 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 you know, that, that's by definition, that's what you're doing. You are replicating the rebellion of the fallen angels. Even if the person doesn't fully realize that. Culturally, they think this is what I should do. Go to a psychic. It doesn't matter. They, n- nobody ever chooses to be possessed by the devil. Nobody ever does this. Nobody. And yet it occurs. So, so you know, the, the original case that brought about the movie, The Exorcist, the, the original case upon which that movie was based, it was actually a young boy rather than, than a young girl who was possessed. It was an aunt that, that came over with a Ouija board and got this kid to, to play uh, at the Ouija board. And guess what? He became possessed out of it. Did he have any idea what he was doing? No. And I, I had an exact case like that. It was a seven-year-old. Now, I mean, by the time he came to me, uh, by the time his, his exorcism, he became one of my exorcism cases, he was into his 30s, but it was at seven years old. And, and it was his, his brother and their friends playing with a Ouija board, uh, and he participated. And now th- this kid, he, he, he didn't know anything. And he, he had been tormented his whole life? Oh, heavens, yeah. What did, I mean, what did his torment look like? So... Um, so what occurs, so this is one of the cases on, on the podcast. Uh, on, it's one of the episodes. He, that night, after playing with the Ouija board, was visited by a figure in his room who offered him a deal. I will make you really strong in exchange for, and then he said a nonsensical word. So um, he requested something. Um, and the individual now, his name is Jeremy. Jeremy couldn't recall today, like, you know, two and a half decades later, what that was, what that word was. But he said, yes. And so this figure jumped into the air and jumped inside him. And from that moment, he was extraordinarily strong. In sports? In everything. In everything. Like he- Like physically strong? Physically strong. Like he, he could beat up kids that were, uh, you know, when he was in elementary school, kids that were three years older than him and, and multiple ones. Uh, he ended up becoming a firefighter and, and broke every record at the academy, uh, every athletic record. So he had this incredible strength. What was the downside? The downside is... Well, clearly is the devil, but in you know, practical... Today, today is a Friday life. afternoon. It's 4.30 Pacific time. And all of a sudden, it's now the Monday after. He has no idea where he's been for the three days that have, that have gone past. He's on the other side of town. He has no shirt on, no shoes and his knuckles are bloody, and he has an extra $3,500 in his pocket, and he has no idea where he got it. So all of that time is unaccounted for, and every action within it is unaccounted for. How many people do you think in our prisons right now were committing evil when they were possessed? I have no idea, but I'll tell you one thing. I used to do a lot of prison ministry uh, in my early priesthood, and I, and I remember going at one time into a death row, and... 
I never, even in all the exorcism cases that I've I've never felt as much evil as I did inside that death row. And the sounds that were being made in that place, I mean, there was a collection of demons like I've never encountered in one place. Do you think that's because of the act of execution or because of the evil accompanying the executed? The evil present in, in those who, in the inmates that are in the prison. Who had committed some of the most heinous crimes. Yep. Consciously or unconsciously, yes. When you're, we're going a bit on a tangent here, but it's so interesting. If you are, you've committed a heinous crime, you plead insanity, and you can somehow prove insanity. You truly didn't remember when you committed this crime, and somehow, it, but it wasn't insanity, me- medically speaking, it was the demonic. Mm-hmm. Have you come, run into this? Not legally. Not, not in a legal case uh, in which I was consulted. I, I, haven't, I haven't been consulted in any legal case, but... Can the devil make someone truly do something evil? Mm-hmm, for sure. Uh, I did know of a case like this uh, where an individual, um, and this was when in those years where I was doing a lot of pr- prison ministry, he, he talked to me about why he was in prison. He was in prison for multiple murders, and if I recall, it was three of them. And he did them in an afternoon in a home. And he had been a Satanist. So he had decided, okay, I'm going to start worshiping the devil. And he was doing his version of a black mass. And then all of a sudden he wakes up in somebody's home. There's three dead bodies around him. And he said to me, it had to be me because there was no one else around. And then all of a sudden coming in, turning into the driveway of the house, he could see from the front window was a was a police cruiser, and this happened in the middle of the afternoon. And he said, "I've read all of the reports. I've read all of them. They all say the same time. It was in the middle of the day, and it had to be in the middle of the day because not everybody could be wrong, and there couldn't be this conspiracy of of." of them making up a false time, a a false time of the day where this occurred. But when I saw that car turn into the driveway, it had its daytime running lights on, like the, the mild form of the headlights. But the day was pitch black. So what it looked like was two, it looked like it was in the middle of the night and this cop car pulls into the driveway. In other words, this man is seeing reality from the eyes of the demons, because for them, everything is dark. So although it was in the middle of the day, he didn't have access to what we have access to and seeing, seeing the daylight the way we see it. He saw night. You and were so, speaking with this man. Oh yeah, personally. Did he ever find deliverance? Did he ever find he certainly, God's grace? He certainly was repentant. Like he, he, well, I don't know where he is now. Uh, like he was there for life.